Aloha and welcome to another show. This is Jason Schwartz, your host at Maui Neutral Zone. It is anything but neutral. You can find us at Akaku Maui Community Media TV. You can find us on radio at KAKU 88.5 FM, the voice of Maui. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us at Maui Neutral Zone. You can find us. But you know what? We are now a couple of years into this, and I have been interviewing people about values, different kind of stuff. And um, this is show 131. I'm going to be switching to podcast and putting this into uh, not a radio, so it, I don't have to be there at the same time every week. So, but we're going to be reformatting. But I wanted to have a guest that really was timely. And we just had Thanksgiving here. Happy Thanksgiving to you. This is 2021. Paul DeLaurier is a face you may recognize and say, I've seen that guy. I've seen that name. Uh, just quickly, Paul, you've been involved for many years. I know that uh, you've been here, what, better than a decade now, right? A total, yes. It'll be over 10 years a total, uh, yes. Okay. And you've been involved here and helped us and been involved in, in politics and in social change and social reform for a good long while. You know, uh, politics aside, you're a guy that thinks and cares about people, and you show it by your actions. Um, every decade or so, I guess it is every decade, we have things special in Maui, and Paul is now involved in that. And Paul, I would like to kind of let you kind of introduce this whole idea, because this is a very special and powerful and fantastic time, even though we see things going on in the world. In the world of Maui, powerful and positive things are happening. Welcome to our show, Paul. How are you today? Well, I'm doing well, Jason. Thank you so much for having me on your show. And, and yes, I, I think that during this time of Thanksgiving, there's a lot that we can be thankful for. And that really hasn't been the main news going out. Uh, no. We've been hearing a constant stream from mainstream media of this great reset. And from that perspective, it's already one track this is the way it is. This is the way society is going. Certainly in Europe right now, there are tremendous protests going on. I think people are really understanding what this road is that mainstream media is trying to push us down. It's about fascism. It's about technocracy. It's about removing liberties. It's about also in the collective consciousness, feeding fear, mistrust, uh, misinformation, uh, uh, censoring uh, things. Again, here we are in a situation where surveillance keeps on increasing at a, a high rate. But there's a way we can go on to another road. And this is a road that mainstream media does not talk about. And yet it's here and we can utilize it effectively and efficiently. Uh, because they don't say that we as community, as a collective can make this shift and go down this other road, like I mentioned, that is about really reclaiming our democracy. And I have a book out uh, recently uh, called Reclaim Paradise. And that's exactly what we can do. We can reclaim uh, what has been going on over the past really uh, 50 years, but ever increasing so. And what we can do, I think, it, in terms of going down this other road, we have a clear path and it's been laid out and it's here that we could utilize it. We started here in Maui County uh, and it has been a, a real uplifting process. But what we're doing though, is creating systemic change. And, and, and what do I mean by systemic change? Well, you know, you're, if I was listening and I didn't have a framework of what you're talking about, you're talking about social change and uh, restoring paradise and doing the right thing in many aspects of our lives. Isn't that what you're talking about? And that in these recent times, we feel like we've been clamped down because of this COVID thing and just a general thing where things are controlled and where our information is 
in given to us in different way and our leadership has a certain posture but in that out of this burning thing is coming something great and that's what i was saying you you're talking about a systemic change that's what this you're involved with the maui charter commission right well, that's one aspect of that change that I'm. So I'm. To. I'm just giving so, 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 the yeah. framework because you're talking about French. So our audience listening now out there, Paul's been involved in social change and political change, and now he's talking because if you weren't on Maui, they may not know what we're talking, Paul. So okay, back to where you were. Well, talking right about now, the systemic change. Yeah, and 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 what I mean by systemic change is when we look at the systems that control and help wire society in a particular way. We're dealing with economic, education, military, medical, judicial, transportation, all these different systems uh, are really uh, shaping our society. But within those systems then, there is an overriding controlling system and that is our governance. And when we look at the three levels of governance, then we look at the federal, state, and local level, local including county, cities, and towns. When we look at that local level, that is where the entry point is. That's where we can go about making systemic change. It's too wired on a state and federal level, especially with mainstream media being controlled. So what we have is a situation where we need grassroots engagement. We need participation. We need involvement by the locals so that they can say, wait a minute, we can take control of our local governance. And that is the key. Now, when we look at our local governance, there is a, what I like to call a trigger. And this is when you move that one piece, everything shifts. So in county governance and in towns and cities also, it's the county council or the board or the yeah. overriding council then that you need a majority. And I, and I have to emphasize a majority. Uh, we've had here in Maui County, uh, we've had for 125 years, there was a period where we didn't have a progressive majority in the county council. But once that happened, the shifts were really in place now that have been happening over the last really four years have been incredible, unprecedented for Maui County. And now all the other counties here in Hawaii are looking and saying, what's happening? How can this be? How can these progressive movements to support the environment and the people, how is that happening when in other counties, they're still struggling in many ways with corporate rule? And that's what we have here on a state level. We, we look at this as Democrats, but we were really dealing with corporate Democrats, which are very different, I think, than those Democrats who are supporting the people in the Aina. So, so uh, and, and, I'm, I'm hearing your story. You're explaining the whole system here. I gotcha. So now the change that you're looking to have happen here, uh, you know, it's a re-evolution, a revolution here in Maui brought about by, I believe, leadership, both on a private sector like yourself and people in the seats in these positions like council who can shift the way things are. That's to me what's exciting. In this time of change and opportunity that's happening, there are people that have an idea where that rudder should be uh, towards self-sustainability and uh, a system that seems much more fair to the people, but it requires participation, right? It's people aligned in action and together the possibilities here are fabulous. Well, well that's, that's just it, that's, that's the key. How do we create then uh, community coming together. We had a very unique challenge here in Maui County with the diversity that we have in, in different cultures. So we have Filipino, Japanese, Portuguese, Mexicans, Hollies. I mean, it goes on in terms of all these different pockets. And the way that it used to be is that they would vote for 
primarily those people who, who were part of their ethnicity. But what we're dealing with here is looking at a process and a system where we can look at getting the very best candidates so that we can get them on the ballot and support them so that they can get elected. And that is, I think, the key in terms of how we can regain our governance on a local level. Again, the, the brass ring, the, the key is getting a majority of the county council. And then from there, everything else will, will uh, even though you don't have the, the, the mayor or even uh, in, some, in some counties, uh, you get uh, the uh, prosecutor is, is, is elected, uh, the uh, police chief is elected, but here it's not. Uh, we have committees, but again, these can be uh, manipulated and they have been in the past. And you know what I, as you're talking about this, I'm, I'm aware that you're educating people about how the system has been. I know that um, right now I, I really wonder um, what is, is happening now because you're, your subject is a very broad one that um, I'm, as a listener, I'm wondering, so what do you want? If, if I was left or right of center, and you're talking about having people on council and it's really important and numbers, I'm also thinking about, that's why my show is about values, because if we talk about the good things and what should be done, the values should rise to the top. And it shouldn't even be a matter of majority and minority. Values should rise up and we should, the numbers should go away. That's what I'm excited about and what you're doing. Because you're, you're very, in my mind, your, your shift and what you're talking about is very radical only to those that are fixed in the mud. But for, for most people in these times of change, what you're doing is refreshing. And I think pe people that vote all kinds of ways on the council, this should be exciting to them too. This is a real important thing that, you know, they say this is more important than whether we live or die. This is moving the whole system to a greater thing for all of us. What a fantastic example to the whole world. You know, we talk about showing them all these things of Maui. This kind of a governance model with the kind of changes that you've been talking that are going to be in front of us, how many, 25, 30 different kind of aspects at more. What if it's like we're changing the field. We're changing right. where the goalposts are. Uh, maybe the goalposts are the same, but now we have a round field. <laughs> and you, when you try to kick the ball, you're wondering, uh, where do you kick? Every direction looks the same. But I'm just really powerfully moved by your involvement. You, you know, you're, as I can tell in your, in your conversation, you're a well, scientist. You're really giving detailed bolts where when I think of, you know, you've been sharing about the, the role uh, of the system, and now you're going to probably talk about the counties and, and how the power structure has been and where the changes need to be. I'm, ho I'm, I'm not sure what direction you're going. So, but so let's, 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 let's take a step back just a moment here. Um, what we're looking at right now is corporate rule uh, that is part of the great reset that is being promoted and what is, is being put onto society at this point in time. When and we say is, corporate is by, rule. Now let, me, let me define. So we have corporate rule. It's about hierarchy. It's about consolidation. It's about backdoor deals, compartmentalization, divisiveness, and systemic racism, that the loyalty and secrecy are, are about dark values. And what I mean by dark values, it's about fear, it's about suppression, it's about surveillance, it's about uh, you know, uh, taking Us away the rights. Uh, and, and it's about social engineering and using false flag attacks also. So what we're dealing with here, you know, and what they're trying to push us toward is a sociopathic system. I mean, this is, when you look at the values of what is driving this sociopathic system, 
it is about, again, suppression. It's about taking away your rights. It's about uh, the uh, control and manipulation by an elite few who, who uh, seem to be eugenicists. So what are we dealing with? Do we want to go down that path or do we want to take a different path? And we can't, because one of the things that's happened, we've talked about values, is that right now there is an unbelievable amount of fear that is kind of all over this planet right now, from the, not only from the suppression, but certainly about the fear being generated about the pandemic, about vaccines, whether to take it or not, and then the suppression that happens for people who don't take it. And again, we're looking at this whole mass thing happening on a global level. The orchestration that has gone into this started, you know, 15 years ago. And, and I've heard about these, this type of situation way back in 2004. So this is something that has been extremely well planned. And we're seeing some of the aftermath, but there's a counter move. And that's the important point here, Jason, that, that we, we can do something different. We can take the situation that we have right now and we can say, no, you, I, 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 because this is going to affect us from generations from now. And this is the gap we have. And that's why it's so important for us to really say, we got to make a change. I was just on a radio interview with Ralph Nader and, and, and the emphasis there again, was that we need to get out of the sociopathic system. We need to get out of it and come to a place where we can reclaim paradise, reclaim uh, our democracy. Let's define sociopathic system because the word, so, talk about media, the word sociopath has been given quite a, you know, fanfare over the time. So a sociopathic system is what? It's, it's filled with well, it's the way it's structured right now. If you look at it, the means that structure, everyone's everyone's individual model is conniving or making moves based on a system that the social order uh, is the driver of this. The way that people are treating each other—that's the corporate structure you're talking about, right? So the well, new no, system. I, I, I think that if you go to the values and you go to their mission. Their mission is about suppression and control. And their values are, again, about divisiveness, systemic racism, uh, secrecy, dark values. When you say they, I, hear, I understand. So I'm saying to you, here comes, here comes the guy on the white horse. It's you and this commission and more than the commission, like you say. It's a whole understanding and change of values. I'm bringing it back down to, to the Maui Commission thing only in that I'm looking to, to identify areas that we're going to see or hope to see or would like to see change because the, the discussion about uh, like you do with the Ralph Nader is more in a national uh, scope and talking about the system and as our whole system. But our, our audience and viewers, I'm hoping they'll see that we're a year away from an election time. That's a really powerful thing to say. We have a whole year. And if we know the direction of what can be, and we get people to see their need to be involved, and that's what I'm hoping this show is going to be able to do. Great. So, so let's talk about that. Let's talk Please. about how we can do this locally and how we've done it here in Maui County locally. Good. So in, two, in, uh, in 2018, uh, we started the Maui Pono Network. But the Maui Pono Network was based on uh, those who came before. So they had uh, a group who was uh, involved with the Ohana uh, uh, Consortium, I think it was called. Uh, and then Isn't the we, coalition that different yeah, stuff? Yeah, Ohana Coalition. Okay. And, and that's, that was the first uh, really uh, attempt to really look at getting a majority of progressives in the county council seats. Then uh, the Shaka movement came. And so this is really built on the connections and relationships uh, that, was, uh, that was done by Joe and by, by Bruce 
I mean, they did an incredible job. And what we've done with the Maui Pono Network in 2018 was to build on those foundations of progressive uh, movement. And we've had a lot of great leaders here. I mean, we have Lucy Andene and Dick Mayer. There are people who have been really uh, thought supporters. And then we had also at one point in time, Alika Atai was very much involved with trying to create a consolidation of a majority of progressives. So in 2018, we took that and we really tried to then bring it to the people why it's so important that we have this majority for the first time in 125 years here in, in, in the county. And when we got a majority in the county council, uh, for the first time, the changes have been amazing. Here's one example of the changes. Please. So they put together uh, a, a, a uh, several amendments for the charter that then the county council put onto the ballot. So in 2020, there were seven charter amendments. One of those charter amendments was that instead of the mayor choosing all of, by the way, let me let me explain. The uh, charter commission is is formed every ten years, and their job is to review and to rewrite the charter based on input from the community, so that it yeah. reflects what the community really needs and really wants and really supports. So this charter is is our constitution. It is the way things are wired. It's our law. It is about home rule and how we define that home rule. So it's extremely important in terms of how governance happens here in our local community. Right. Well, when you mentioned Lucien, Denae, and Dick Mayer, they again been a real driving and keeping the progressive movement going here for a long time and uh, so, so what and we now do, you're now you're in that role you're in that seat i don't know who else is on the commission but you hold a progressive view has the have, well let me finish you, let me finish here jason because what happened sure. in the ballot was that then the instead of the mayor choosing all 11 commissioners now we have the county council choosing nine and the mayor choosing two so that meant for the first time, instead of the mayor choosing his cronies to rewrite the laws, especially when they're part of the good old boy network, then those laws and the way things were wired were not there to really uh, support the community as well as they could. But now for the first time, because of this change in the charter in this year, when we had then this uh, review of the charter, because this is the 10th year, uh, they were able to select then 11 who were more representative of the entire community and our needs. So it, it, it made it uh, quite different than all the other charter commissions that have been gone before. So this allowed us then to say, wait a minute, um, let's, let's choose people who represent the people and the INA. And so we have 11 commissioners that were chosen and, and uh, I was one of those who were selected. And we've been meeting uh, every two weeks uh, for anywhere from three to six hours. And we have thus far uh, agreed on over 40 charter amendments. Now, now, some of them are very small in terms of an amendment, in terms of having it be like a, a three-year term that goes to a five-year or if, if things are changed, you know, for, but there's some of them are huge that are happening. And, and let me give you an example. Good. Planning department. Now, we look at the development of all our communities here and what's happened with this amendment that we just passed is that instead of uh, having the uh, planning done by a central planning department, which was chosen and selected by the mayor, which was then later approved by the actual county council. But, but the selection process and the way it's been done is that the mayor chooses then uh, who, who will be in that commission. What we've done instead is we're saying no more central planning commission. 
we have a, uh, with the if this passes in the 2020 election, we'll have no more central planning. Instead, planning is going to happen based on the regions, so that we have citizens within that region who will be participating, and they will become the planning department. For that, they would they will be that not the planning department, but they will be the the planning oversight for that region, and they will have the authority to do that. So instead of having the mayor or the good old boy network control them, the planning, the planning then goes to the people, to the citizens, so that they can determine how their community evolves into the future. So see how different this is, and and, and the potential impact and the repercussions. This can yeah, by changing I, that one charter thing. No, when I when I hear that that kind of a thing, that's what I meant about changing the shape of the football field. It, 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 it is. It, it, it's it a is. great thing to see those kinds of changes happening. I'm it's sure getting, that every yeah. mayor that's in there says, "Oh, why would they want to take uh, power away from me? I'm very fair and open." But this way, we won't even make it a problem for them to even be a consideration. Gives I a think, uh, yeah, in, in terms of county governance, again, I think that the uh, county council is there to really represent, I think, the broad range of people in their different districts. So I think that uh, the county council does listen uh, very carefully and, and does respond uh, on a whole, especially now that we have a progressive majority who's overseeing then our, our county. Uh, now we have a mayor who is, is let's say, not as progressive, okay? Uh, and there has been a lot of uh, challenges with that. But again, we're changing the system. Here's another example. We've had our, our departments, then we have all of these different departments that are doing all of these operations. And one of them was housing and human concerns. It was one department for housing and also our human concerns. So what we've done in this charter is saying, wait a minute, affordable housing is such a huge issue here. And we don't even have a department to take care of specifically housing and the huge issue that represents. Especially now when we look at our average house sale over a million dollars, I mean, who in terms of our local residents can afford that? And, and, and again, you're, you're looking at, you know, having an income of, you know, $300,000 a year in order to afford a house in a mortgage like that. So again, so what we've done is we've separated with saying, no, human concerns, that's a priority. These are near term issues of life and death for people. So that usually takes priority as it should for that department. But now that we're gonna have a, hopefully a separate housing department, which I hope this passes in 2022, that it allows that department to have the resources, the planning, the staff, so that they can really start to look at some of the affordable housing issues and needs that we have. What now, I... in addition, yeah, yeah, in addition, um, the Maui Pono Network is involved with uh, supporting all the uh, different nonprofits coming together so that we can create a very highly cost effective solution. And, and with that, make it so that properties are affordable in perpetuity. And that's going to be huge, uh, I think, as we look into the future of our county. Uh, you know, because I listen to you and I, I'm hearing you. <laughs> I just am aware that when you start separate department for housing, and the separate one for human concerns, maybe combined with other things, so you're changing the shape of what that government looks like. You're changing on who is choosing the people guiding the policies, and you're making things more local. Uh, I hope that this, this also involves some kind of council of now that each region has expressed itself and has expressed itself through its, its actions and leadership, uh, it, the, the way the monies have to be balanced and the way we have to have, if you change then have two departments, now you have two department heads making X. 
Uh, has that stuff gotten into the yeah? The but field? but there yeah. But the but the issue is here is that there are two separate issues. Uh, human concerns and housing uh, yeah. really need to be handled separately, and and you need to have the resources which we do have. I mean, we're a very rich county. Our budget uh, is eight hundred and sixty million dollars. So, uh, and for a county this size, that is pretty darn good because of our property taxes that we have. Um, and again, that can be improved as we move forward so that we can support the affordable housing initiatives that we have. So I think that when we look at, you know, systemic change, this is, this is the process of systemic change. Another example, um, the uh, right. mayor would choose the, can, the people who would be uh, involved with all the different uh, commissions and, and uh, boards that we have. We have 32 here that oversee different aspects. So we have the Liquor Commission and we have you know, all these different uh, volunteer, community volunteer uh, uh, yeah, uh, boards that support on, and give recommendations to the mayor or whoever is gonna make the decisions, right? No, that's but, wrong. Who, but who is on the board and who is on these commissions is extremely important to our community. We found a lot the of mayor, empty spots the mayor, a lot, right? The mayor, yeah, so the mayor would get then all the candidates and wouldn't disclose who all the candidates are uh, and then just select one out of all of those and, and then give it to the uh, 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 county council for them to decide also and agree upon. However, what we're looking at here is having it then, uh, we've uh, agreed to have a blue ribbon commission. They did this about, uh, oh gosh, about 12 years ago. Uh, they did it only for a short time, but it was extremely effective and efficient. Um, uh, Dick Mayer was in, was in charge of the blue ribbon commission and Kelly King was on it. Uh, and, and it was just in a very highly effective way of creating a repository of skills and talents of our citizens so that they could actually be asked to participate in these different uh, boards and commissions. Because again, it takes certain skills. It, it takes certain understanding and know-how to have a blend of those to come together. It becomes highly effective and efficient. But Why would the mayor have any reason not to want to support that? Power is not the issue here. Isn't this supposed to be no, service? Power, no, 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 no. But again, when you look at the way things were, especially when we look at the hierarchical system that we first started talking about on a larger scale, it's about the elite few or the elite holding control and power. So even holding. if it filters down to the mayor, the, again, the stance is control and power. We're going to have uh, one. Uh, we have a charter commission coming up on Thursday uh, and on December second, and one of them that's coming up is the county administrator, uh, and that's going to be very huge. Because uh, can you imagine an eight hundred and sixty million dollar corporation that is primarily focused on operations doesn't have a chief operating officer? I mean, we have a manager. We have a we have a managing director. But we don't have what we really, really need is a COO. And, and to have a corporation this size and not have that is, to me, is insane. It just, I mean, my well, background, well, my background I, is organizational development. And I well, to talk, it, to talk in the words of people, because a COO and a chief executive, most people are going, ah, what is that? That's what that means is we're, we're dealing with a mayor right now who is moving chairs on the Titanic or is moving and aligning these jobs that are responsibility to keep this ship going. And so that's what they focus on. But that doesn't have a separate person who is over it all, who's looking over the horizon, who's planning and making changes with a future plan in mind. Because it's that old thing about you're up to your eyes. It's nice to have great plans, but then you come in and you're up to your eyes in alligators. You need someone who isn't involved in operations that can step up. That's what Paul is. That's a chief operating officer is separate than someone who's running it. 
if you will. That's what I want to convey, right? Isn't that what you're saying? Well, uh, you do need someone who's highly skilled and effective in operations management, which is a very different skill than being a mayor. But the mayor has taken that responsibility onto himself and it's created a big, big problem in terms of the effectiveness and efficiency of how the county is run. It's, it's based on political, it, it's, it, it's based okay. on a four year period. So like Instead right now, having... a guy like Sandy Boz, right? Sandy Boz is right there in concert with the mayor. Would you call him administrator? Is the mayor the decision maker and Sandy Boz is the administrator or this is a totally different role? Yeah, I, I you know, I'm not gonna go specifically on Sandy, but I- I'll No, but I mean, reflect, as far as- I, I will reflect, I, no, I wanna reflect back on what the uh, county council members have told me the way it was in the past. Okay. And basically what we had was this manager was really a, um, a very highly paid secretary for the mayor. And that's how they termed uh, that position. And what we need instead is a chief operating officer who has the skills, the background, the understanding to run an $860 million corporation with all of these different departments that are doing all these different things. We, the way the, 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 way the uh, county operates is in isolated silos to a large extent. There's not a level of collaboration and cooperation. In fact, that's one of the charter amendments that we passed that they have to start. Instead, instead of working in isolated silos, work collaboratively because it just has a, such a negative effect on effectiveness and efficiency of how we run this, this uh, county. Uh, it, it is uh, really our, our, our kuleana in, in terms of the commission to really support then effectiveness and efficiency in terms of county operations. And uh, it hasn't been that. It's been more, it's been more third world. I mean, if you, if you literally look at the way governance is compared to other counties in the United States, this is more yeah. like a, a third world operation. And, and we gotta graduate beyond that. We gotta become a, uh, a professional, uh, uh, effective, uh, way of administrating and managing these tremendous resources that we have. But again, when they're not managed properly, or, or let's say there's a larger influences that are affecting things like the hotels and, and taxes that they pay or they didn't pay, or, or the way development happens and the skirting of environmental regulations that now are burdened back to the citizens. Who have to take care of things that you know were done because of little shortcuts in the planning departments and giving the wink wink okay you know to their buddies yeah. this has got to end this has so so this is a way to end it uh through these different charter amendments that'll be coming in. it stops the wiring it stops the wiring from being dysfunctional to one where it's effective and efficient and really supports the community in the ina the other way it's it's about really uh, affecting the profits of an elite few. And Are you and going to be, on, is the uh, commission going to be announcing some of these things or yeah. coming so, up so the, still oh, too early, still working? Oh, no, no. There, there have been uh, regular uh, public service announcements. Uh, we have actually, <laughs> for the first time, uh, we're actually engaging the community and communicating and participating. We had a, a contract that was given to Gilbert and Associates, uh, a local advertising agency. And they've been doing, I think, a very good job in terms of putting the messages out. Uh, you can see uh, a lot of uh, every two weeks, the, there'll be uh, an announcement in terms of what is going to be happening. Uh, our next meeting is on December 2nd, where the public can participate and give their comments and input on specific issues that are going to be covered. Um, they I, can where would we find out, besides the Maui News, which now only lets you look at a few articles before you get a subscription, <laughs> where do we get information in Maui County about these kind of things now? So, so for the Charter Commission, go to Maui Charter Commission and, and just put Google that and you'll get over to the site. Okay. And it's a county site, <coughs> excuse me, 
And, and on there, you'll see all of the amendments that have been passed thus far and those that are upcoming. And uh, again, uh, if people want to give testimony to any of those amendments, uh, we welcome that. We really implore that, in fact. Uh, we, we, we solicit So that. Larry Gilbert and company is taking your stuff and getting it out to the public. That's what you say, they're doing a good job. Hopefully we're gonna see the public being aware of this in my mind more because the next step is the one that interests me most, which is the participation. You know, when you talk about this, to have candidates, you need to have candidates that know what they're doing. And so that takes participation enough to, when there gets to be a decision, you know what's going on. I'm sure that's part of your process it has to be. So, right? so, so, yeah. So let's, <laughs> let's take a step back from the, so the commission, again, as I mentioned, I think is, is something that is it, certainly an integral part of systemic change, but also part of that though, is getting the right people elected. And uh, I think that one of the things that we learned from the first uh, election was that, uh, especially when we had one of the candidates that we got in turn on us, uh, and, and go the opposite direction and support the corporate agenda, uh, that we, we, re we really got that we have to do a better job in terms of engaging candidates early on. So what we've started is, is a minor league. I guess you could call it, uh, it's like baseball, where you have uh, a, 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 this baseball team goes out and starts searching and looking for people who are in high school and in college and if they show promise, then they'll have their, their scouts go up to them and say, hey, are you interested in becoming a professional baseball player? And if they are, they will bring them into the minor league. And they start them off at the A, on the A league. And that means that they, uh, during the summertime, they take breaks and they, they, they bring these kids in and they start working and they start developing. If they get really good and they progress, they go to double A. And if that is successful there, they go to triple A and then in triple A, you know, then they can go to the major league. Same, you... thing, same thing here, what we're doing. So we have a, uh, right now we have a, a minor league where we're going out and looking for people who testify, who are doing great civic engagement process, projects, who are involved with the community, who communicate well. And then we ask them, are you interested in running? For, for candidacy, you, know, you have a lot of potential in terms of your leadership, in terms of the way you articulate yourself, in terms of the way you're focusing on these core issues that are so important to our community. So my so only thing, there. I, yeah. when I hear about this, the only thing I think about, and I always may or may not be true, but we are going out to find candidates. That means whoever this group that's going is looking for candidates with values, like you said, that match up with yours, as it's going out and it's being announced to the public, I'm always thinking about, well, what are the Republican, don't wanna pick on a group. What are the other guys doing? Are they developing candidates? Are we going to see a society, I hope, that puts out education, puts out truth, and then lets good sense be the driver and take the these political, that's why I'm hoping to talk about that, you know? Take the political pieces out of it and just have things that are good and self-sustaining come together. And that's where you don't have to uh, be quite as tied to that vote. Because unless people are trained and know what's going on in their community, they may be good leaders. But, you know, that always that, there's always these other sides. I'm always wondering, like in our in our more national things now, where we see that some of the people that are against stuff bring in violence and other things because they're not educated and groomed in a way like you're talking. So as this is happening, I hope it, I hope that, I know there's a guy, I'm sure you know, Gary Hoosier, who's been known here in uh, Kauai and also in you know, state politics. So his training of candidates, I'm hoping that it's very broad politically, only in that I think that's really healthy for our system. You know, I'm just, as I'm talking to you, I, I hear you guys that are doing progressive things are doing great, but I always wonder about 
who else is in the game that also needs to be educated about the way things are done yeah. so, to argue so their all, position? Yeah, yeah. first yeah. of all, uh, Jason, that uh, we, uh, the Maui Pono Network is, is not involved in terms of supporting a particular party. Uh, no. From, and, and, and we are here in certain terms of supporting people who really have their priority in terms of the people in the environment and supporting them instead of corporate profits. And that's, you know, that's our main focus. So, so what we do in terms of getting these people involved early on and supporting them and getting them involved with the county council members, getting them involved on specific projects, we will go we will bend over backwards to give them an opportunity and a platform so that they can develop and evolve. The same thing is happening with corporate rule also. They groom their candidates and they go through a very rigorous process. Do they? And, oh, it's amazing. I mean, they will they, uh, give you an example. Um, uh, when I was in Massachusetts, I used to have regular meetings uh, with uh, leaders in our community at my house. And we'd have about 60 people there and we had these big discussions. And one time I had uh, these, our state rep there. And then I had a state senator there at our house. And, and, and what happened was I asked them, how does the system work? How are people advanced through the system? And he gave a very stark kind of response saying it's rigged that what happens is that you'll go in as a as a freshman and then they'll try to put you on different committees and then they'll have the party boss being in charge of those committees and they will tell you to vote certain ways even if you know that it's against the people and the environment and if you don't do what they want you to do they come by and says you know, I'm very disappointed with you. I, you know, I don't think we're going to be able to support you next election. In fact, we're going to try to get someone to take you out right now. You know, if you keep on voting this way or keep on, that's how, that's the way the system is with corporate rule, whether it's Republican or Democrat, it doesn't matter. What matters is do they, they support the corporate agenda and what's going on? You know, so the so what we're looking at are people in terms of the grooming process, not filtering them through dark values and say, you know, are you into corruption? Are you into manipulation? Are you into propaganda? If so, guess what? You get to go to the next level. No, we're doing just the opposite in terms of yeah, do you, I, do you I hear you. yourself. But I, I'm just saying those things that we're talking about. That's that sociopath that we talked about earlier, isn't it? The system of sociopath. But this, this, this allows the system to, to then filter through and right. allows those people to go to the top. And so what you get is a selection of A versus B, which is really the same. Yeah. And, you know, because it's about corporate rule. It's not about Republican or Democrat or any of these parties. So that's why we have to bypass that in terms of the rewiring process and look for people who are there to support our community. Who, and, and what happens, and in, in, in what I'm seeing happening here to a certain extent, is that you gain more control of home rule. Now, that's very important in terms of the tyranny that we're facing on a global level at this point in time. If and home rule, you're talking local, even to the point of local areas of this local island that's so, where so, the so, grip is and that's, that's... Right. so, so in, in in large counties you have cities that exceed our, our the size of this county so they need to create then on a city level an umbrella of, of progressives that support and protect the citizens and the environment from the tyranny that's coming from the top down you see, the thing is, with county governance, this is, this is really important. Counties are the um, a legal entity that are separate, that have their own charter, as we mentioned. And that's their own laws and, and their own constitution. Then the states have their own also charter and bylaws that they are run by. And then on a federal level, that happens also. But what 
is the way it's wired and the way things happen is that the uh, counties are the administrators. They're the ones who are involved with the, this is where the rubber meets the road. But the county, uh, the state and federal are dependent on the county to get all the money and resources and all this stuff, they suck it out of the county and the towns and the cities. But what we're doing here and saying, no, we can create a protective barrier uh, and, and, and support our local community so that this tyranny and injustice doesn't penetrate. And that is why this is so important right now and why this is really, I think, affecting then can affect global change in a positive and uplifting way because it counteracts then the tyranny that's coming from the top down. Instead, what we do is we create on a grassroots bottom up. Where well, a, we are a, fortunate a, to be here to be able to try this rather than on the mainland. They'd, someone would be trying to smash us. We've got a lot of independence. You have been an integral part of making this happen here over the last handful of elections, more than a handful, 2018. To do that, you were working before. You've been tireless. I really personally want to thank you for the commitment that you've made, the time commitment, the research commitment, the, the commitments that you have done more than just talk, Paul. You are a great example of a person that takes it and moves forward and is a really good leader because you're, you're very encouraging. You're, our audience out here should feel like they're very fortunate to have someone that is in that group of 11 in this charter commission that is aware of just how important this restructure is at this incredibly important time. Any other things that are specific? I know we've covered a lot of a range of things that you might want to have talked about, but I, I know that there's probably, um, I want to call it something that kind of puts it all together that you really want to deliver to an audience. Anything you want to specifically sure. share? Sure, I, I would say, first of all, that the 2022 election coming up in November is going to be extremely important in terms of our county constitution, our charter. Uh, there are going to be a lot of amendments that this uh, group has put forth that can change it so that our operations are much more functional, effective, efficient, that we can deal with issues like affordable housing, like food sustainability, uh, like cleaning up our environment, dealing with all different types of issues. We can do so much more effectively and efficiently, but we need those votes so that we can change the wiring so that it does become, like I said, more effective, much more effective and efficient. Well, you've been so, a tireless champion with this stuff. Go ahead. Go and ahead. The, an, another, another piece is that we're going to be starting in May to start interviewing candidates for the 2022 election. Uh, we have state representatives. Now, the state, again, is where the wiring has been very dysfunctional. And again, it's been just like uh, it was done in the state in Massachusetts, that little example I gave you, exact same thing's happening here. Uh, so we have corporate rule, uh, basically, it's, you know, you, they call it Democrat, but in reality, in terms of how things function and how things are, are, are put down and laws, I mean, they wouldn't even allow the discussion to happen on raising the minimum wage from $10.20 an hour to $15 an hour. And yet all these studies show that in order for people to live here in Maui County, you need $17 an hour. Minimum. So, 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 so this is how crazy and how unsupportive the system is to the people. And that's what we got to change. Great. But we change it through then our elections. And, and that's why when we get state reps, we need to change our state reps. We have we have several representatives, you know, uh, uh, you know, Troy and Kyle and Justin and all those. They're all part of the Good Old Boy Network, and they do exactly as they're told. 
and they get the support of the of, of Democrats who put out flyers every other week or every month for their candidates, and they you know they bumper this. We have to look at how they vote. I mean, these guys are voting so that water, our water, is controlled by offshore foreign interests. I mean, our, our water is our future. It, it, it determines not only our crops that we can grow and where we can grow them, but also our developments. And to have that being controlled by a foreign entity? This is I, insane. I understand. I mean, these are the kind of issues. Yeah, we, so, there's so, so much that we're talking about. The, these look, are critical things. People need to understand this. But in order for us to get control of that, again, with the 2022 elections are so important. Yeah. And that's why the Maui Pono Network, we go through great lengths. Last time we spent our staff, uh, our core group, we spent over 3,000 hours going through. Jason, you, you came on for one of the interviews. One of the interviews, uh, yeah. Uh, and and uh, we really did a lot of, of vetting to make sure that we got the right candidates in, and, you know, that we were supporting. Uh, same thing is going to happen this time around. I think our state representatives, it's going to be extremely important that we get some new blood in. We have some progressives, but not many. Uh, and in terms of the county council, we have to keep on increasing it so that there is a level of collaboration and openness, especially as we look at integrating all of these charter amendments that yeah. are, are being put forth at this time. So, I, I, you know, it, it, it's a very important time. Uh, I think that people need to be consciously aware. Uh, MauiPonoNetwork.org is, a, I think, a very good source. It's, a, it's an information hub. Last election, we had 128,000 hits on our website. Uh, because what we do is we, we're just objective. We want to get the facts like you, Jason. We just want to get it clear. We want to make it uh, so that everything is well vetted and, and people are asked important questions so that they, the, uh, the community can understand who they're voting for. And that's our main objective, so that you can make informed decisions. Same with dealing, we also give a lot of information on all the key issues, water rights, what's happening with the charter, all these different things will be on our website. Our social media, we got, uh, we were getting uh, just on Facebook alone, 30,000 hits uh, a month during the election process. So again, you know, our, our objective, uh, our kuleana is to be an information hub, uh, an objective, clear information hub for the community so that they can make informed decisions about our voting process. And again, we'll have charter amendments and also candidates uh, that'll be there. And, you know, it's it'll be an important time. So I, I would, and if you, are interested in volunteering and participating, you can check in with us at mauipononetwork.org. Um, and I have a book that uh, is out right now. Uh, I mentioned it earlier on. It's yeah. called uh, it's called Reclaim Paradise. Uh, and uh, here it is. They are. <laughs> and, and, and you can get that at reclaimparadise.org. It gives a, a great overview of our process how we've been doing this, how we can bring about systemic change, not only here in Maui County, but globally. Uh, so I think it's a very timely and important book. Uh, again, reclaimparadise.org. Uh, and uh, so, uh, and again, if you're interested in specific information about candidates uh, and charter issues, that's the mauipononetwork.org. And again, you can uh, look at all the different charters that are being proposed going by, to the Charter Commission, Maui Charter Commission. And uh, thank you for all the time and effort that you and your team um, are. You're so committed for all of us. And like I, you know, I say about values, that's what attracts me to what you do. Like you say, you may, it may be political, but it's not. It's social values. And we don't care what your political persuasions are. If, if something is right, it's right. You know, and that's, that's what's really nice whenever I've been around the people there. They're very open to listening and sharing 
and making things better rather than throw out the baby with the bathwater. It's a really refreshing group of people. I, I look forward to being in that process and hope others will be involved in your process. And, and I just want to mention uh, yeah. we, that the Maui Pono Network, we have an incredible core group. And it, it really, it, it, there's six of us who are ongoingly participating in this and, and, and working hard. So it's, it's, not, it's not me, it's our whole team and all the different people that we're working closely with. So I, I just want to, you know, put that out because that's the reality of it. I, I mean, we work uh, with the spirit of aloha and we work together, effect, I think fairly effectively and efficiently as a team. And uh, again, if people would like to participate and get involved and get engaged with this process and what we're doing and serving our community in this way, you can check us out at, again, mauipononetwork.org. Okay. They're going to see it every time they see your name, they're going to see it because I uh, like to make sure that the audience can be in touch with guests, especially someone as uh, important as you, Paul. You've been a very important and influential force here in Maui and in Hawaii and uh, Massachusetts. We feel very fortunate here. We, we reel them in. We reeled in a great one when we got you, Paul. Really happy to have you here in the community. And I'm, you know, I came here from the mainland too. We have a, I'm really excited to know that the Hawaiians also are getting more involved because of people like Alika and others that you've been working with over time to see the integration and political activity that also involves our local people and cultures is really an important piece for me. It's been very, it always felt when I first came here, like it was separate, but now right and progressive things to help the Aina and our land and do right for the people, hopefully will bring these cultures together in a really beautiful way, you know. And, and that's the unifying force. When we look at supporting then future generations, I mean, we're looking at our actions really affecting seven generations forward. Just like the seven generations past has affected you know, our community narrative and how we move forward with our discussions based on the culture that has evolved. So I think that when people look at uh, really uh, getting involved with social change, what you're also looking at is community narrative. And that is, uh, affects then our subconscious belief systems. And we have to counter then a lot of the propaganda and misinformation that is being put forth by mainstream media. Uh, which again is controlled by corporations. So, uh, you know, we've got five corporations who control it. So, well, I hope that when people listen to mainstream media, that they listen to listen for facts and separate them from the judgments and slants because the facts are undeniable. And, you know, everyone's got their opinion about them, but facts are really that's what somehow is happening here. The truth is coming out instead of, it's not like we're running to find it. It's here, but it's with all the rest of this stuff around it, it's hard to see where the truth is. But it's, it's an amazing process. Paul, you are a champion, and I'm glad that you're getting uh, exposure on the national level with a guy like Ralph Nader. Uh, maybe he'll come here and uh, we'll uh, have a picnic. Well, you know, I'm, I'm so proud of our Maui County because, like you say, you may have a group of six, but that six begets six begets another six. And that's what we're talking about. Everyone being active and participating in saving, saving everything. We've got to be the example that we were waiting. We're waiting for leaders and we've discovered it's us. And that is such a funny one we hear, but it seems to be the truth. It really is. And you are it, Paul. Thank you for joining me here today on The Neutral Zone. And thank you, Jason, for what you do and helping to communicate to our community the way you do. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, I hope you'll join us again. And to you out there in the world at large, we hope that you will see you again and uh, have a beautiful day. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>